Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres. My name is Teresa. Now I'm going to give y'all some ideas of how you can take some thrifted jewelry and turn them into some really pretty Victorian shabby chic customized pieces. I found these earrings at Salvation Army and I think they were a dollar. What you want to do is you want to choose jewelry pieces that are, have fl are, are flat because what we want to do is we're going to decoupage these beautiful lady designs on them. I got these downloads from Etsy and they were less than $4. They're sent to your email and you can download them and print them as many times as you want to. You want to paint your base of your jewelry. You always want to paint it white so your decoupage paper will pop. Once your paint dries, and I'm going to use my decoupage medium that I love, and that's DIY Liquid Patina. I cut out the designs of the ladies that I wanted to use on my earrings, and I took a lady design that I had two of, or you can print two, but you want your earrings to be the same. Now, I just placed her on the earring the way that, you know, she would show up the best and fit, and then once the Liquid Patina dried, I went around and I sanded the edges and smoothed her out really well. And I did the same on the second earring. Once they both dry, I just sealed them both using some liquid patina and you wanna go around the edges and make sure your edges are sealed so your paper doesn't peel back up. Now we got some beautiful customized earrings that we can wear or we can give as a gift. The thing about these little decoupage jewelry projects are they're so much fun and the hunt for the jewelry was even funner. I found several pieces at my Salvation Army and a lot of times their jewelry is 50 cents. So I found this beautiful necklace and I thought since it had a flat top on it, it would make a good piece. And I also found these little little um, tags. This one is an Old Navy piece, but it's got a flat um, back. And this one I think was Aeropostale and it has a flat back. So I thought these would be perfect and I think I paid 50 cents each for these. Now we're gonna do the same process. You're gonna need to paint your tags or whatever kind of jewelry base you're gonna decoupage on. You wanna paint it white. Now after I did the first one, I got smart and realized I could take the chain out very easily. So on the second one, I removed the chain and I'll replace it later. Now once I got both my pieces painted and it dried, now I'm gonna take the sheet of my ladies that I've downloaded and I'm gonna pick out some images that will fit well on the back of these tags. I love this one and I thought this one fit really well and then I chose another one and I'll show it to you in just a minute. Now I like to work in sections when I'm decoupaging. I place my image over you know, the base of my project. I hold it down with my fingers really well and then I work on the ends. I'll start with one end, decoupage it, and then I'll apply the other end. And that way you don't move your image off of your, you know, your project once you get it placed. Once the decoupage medium, um, the liquid patina dried, I went around it with my sand, sandpaper, I sanded off the edges and made them really smooth. And I'll do the same thing to the next one. Now once you sand off your images and you get it just the way you want it, then you wanna go around the top and the sides and seal it really good with your liquid patina, let it dry and now it is coated and it will, it, it, it should last. Now I thought this lady was absolutely beautiful so I'm gonna apply her to this one doing the same method. Now once I got both of them made, I just went through, I punched back the holes using a little pencil and then I'm just gonna replace and use the same chains. Now, if you don't want to use the chains that sometimes come on your jewelry, maybe you'll have some chains. And some of some old jewelry maybe that you have laying around the house, you can replace your chains with, with some other if you prefer. But I'm just going to go and use these little chains. And then now we've got some beautiful, very unique little necklaces that were so much fun to make. And I feel like everybody are, is going to love these. And if you have a vendor booth, I think these would be a great item that would be very inexpensive to make, but I think these would go over very well because it's something unique and not something that everybody has. Now I'm gonna show you how I upcycled this little necklace. 
I thought it was beautiful just the way it was, but I'm going to add one of these designs into the center of it and just show you how easy it is to recycle the, this, this jewelry that we got at Salvation Army, and some of it was 50 cents. You know, you can't beat that. And like I say, you may have some jewelry laying around the home, around your home that you may not use anymore. Get that out and, you know, do something different with it and make some really unique pieces. I think these would be great to style with some of your cute tops, wear it to church. And like I say, I think these would definitely be conversation pieces. I just use the same method. I decoupage your on using my liquid patina, let it dry. You want to sand off the paper and then just seal it really good. And now we got another beautiful, unique jewelry piece. Now that we got some really unique jewelry made, I'm going to show y'all another little idea that's fun. I picked up this little package of six magnets at Dollar Tree, and with those same downloads that we got off Etsy, I've got a bunch of these, and like I say, you can print them as many times as you want to. So since I've already got some of these printed out, I'm just going to cut some of these out. I painted my magnets white, and I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to apply some of these beautiful lady images to these magnets and we will have some really pretty unique magnets and a lot of things magnets will stick to and when i go to style all these pieces i'll show you some items that i have that worked really well with these magnets and it just adds a little bit of cute vintage detail to your pieces now in these magnets i did the same process i just held my image down with my finger and i just decoupage in sections I do one, one end at one time, and then I go and I do the other end. Make sure, because these magnets are a little rounded, so you want to make sure that you get it applied really well down on it really flat. And make sure that your design is down on your image really well and sealed. Once it dried really good, I just went around again with my sanding paper on each one and just sanded around the edges really well and got them smoothed out. And then once I did that, I went over with a top coat, of the liquid patina, I sealed them really well on the top and along the edges, and now we've got some beautiful magnets. I want to take just a minute to remind y'all things that you see in my videos now you are able to purchase at Stephen's Unique Antiques. I will leave all of Stephen's information down below so if you see something in the videos that I do now that you're interested in purchasing just contact him. Also make sure you are subscribed to my channel. I'd love for you to be a part of my family. Make sure to like the video if you did today and also make sure to go over and check out my new channel Teresa Green. Now, I'm so excited to show you these next projects because I'm about to use a new product I've never used before and I got a new bunny mold. But y'all, I'm about to use Fast Cast. I'm going to have a link to this down below, but this is a great alternative 
to to dry clay. If you use clay in your molds, y'all know some it has some disadvantages. This right here, I'm going to show y'all how quick and easy this is. You want to pour equal amounts of each of these bottles. They, there will be two bottles in the box. You just want to do equal amounts. Now, this is my first time using this. So I use way too much product. So learn from me. I should have used about half this much. But like I say, this is my first time experimenting with this. So y'all are going to come along with me and, and just see how this technique works. You want to mix it for 30 seconds in one cup. Pour it in the next cup and mix another 30 seconds. And then on the instructions, it says, do not hesitate. And they mean it. This stuff will start to cure really fast. But that's the part I love about it. Once it starts to cure and heats up, it will turn a solid white. But just keep pouring it in your mold. And with a little popsicle stick, I'm just forming it into some of those little tight spaces like my little bunny's legs and my bunny's ears. And like I say, I was going to make a couple of more things, pour it in some more molds. But y'all, it started setting up in the cup before I had time to get another design made. That is how fast you've got to go once you mix it up. And like I say, don't make the mistake and waste it and mix up too much product like I did. Y'all, this cures in about 10 to 15 minutes and you will see it drying right before your eyes. It will just turn solid white. They remove from your molds really easy. And the thing I liked about this, is it, it did, they did not, there was no cleanup on my molds. It didn't leave, leave any kind of residue in my molds. Look how clean clean my mold is that one I had to throw away because like I say I didn't get it poured fast enough but this is a great alternative to to drying clay if you want to try something different once I got them out then I'm just going to go around the edges and I'm just showing you a couple of ways of how you can re remove a little bit of the excess residue left from from the mold it was very easy you can either pinch it off with your fingers bend it around to the back or you can get your sandpaper and sand it off now I'm going to take one of these little magnets. You get a pack of these at Dollar Tree with some hot glue. I'm going to attach this little bunny mold onto a magnet. So now we got another cute little idea for a magnet. Now for my other bunny, I'm going to show y'all this little tic-tac-toe item that I got. I picked it up at Salvation Army and somebody had made like a little DIY project out of it. But I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to use all these little scrap wood pieces. I just took all these pieces apart and on one side, like I say, someone did a little DIY tic-tac-toe board, which is super cute. But on the other side, look at this beautiful wood. They've already distressed it and painted it for me, so I'm just going to use one. I got Ben to drill a couple holes and I just applied my larger bunny mold that I just made using some Elmer's wood glue. I just applied him to the board, but look how beautiful he is. And another advantage to use in this quick dry um, fast cast is it doesn't crack a lot of times when I use the clay mold um, the clay to make my molds a lot of times once it dries I'll have cracks in it so just another advantage but just a couple of tips work fast once you mix up your mixture make sure to mix it exactly like the instructions say go fast and I think you will really love this new product. I know I do. Now on the next one, I'm going to show you how I got this little $1 little metal um, little planner. And I'm going to show you how cute the little bunny magnet fits on it. All I did was I painted this white. Now we've got a great little magnet project piece, decor piece that we can put our little magnets on. Now remember those little tic-tac-toe pieces. I'm going to use a couple more and give you some more ideas and inspiration for how we can use these little scrap pieces of wood that we got off this game. And I think we only paid a dollar for it. So I'm going to take another one of those little boards. I've got these beautiful transfers and I'm going to have these linked in my Amazon store. So I'll make sure to leave a link for these down below. These are absolutely beautiful and you get three sheets of these to a pack. 
but I'm going to apply the one that has a little bird on this. I think it fits perfect on it. It's going to get a little bit of that calligraphy writing. It's going to get some florals, and it's going to get the bird. So on this one little piece of scrap wood, we're going to capture a really beautiful design, and I think this is going to go so well to put out with your summer decor. Now I'm just taking a little piece of rustic wire I have. It already has a couple little holes in the top of this board. And I'm just going to utilize those little holes, put this little rustic wire in it, add a little shabby chic bow to it, and now we got a beautiful little scrap wood piece. Now I'm having so much fun with this little tic-tac-toe game that I'm going to take the third piece of wood. We've got this one left over, so now I've got this beautiful set of gorgeous florals. These are transfers also, and I'll leave a link to these down below, but these are absolutely beautiful, and you get a couple of sheets of these, and they are so pretty. They've got the really pretty detail to them with the leaves and the stems and the buds. But I'm going to take this one. I feel like the majority of this one will fit on my wood. And I just positioned it on the wood um, where I could get, you know, most of the, the floral on it. And that little bottom, you know, you're going to cut it off and throw that away anyway. Go ahead and transform that onto, transfer that onto your board. Just make it wrap around. And that way, if you ever see the bottom of your little board, you, you will have captured that detail. Now we've got another beautiful piece that we can set out in our summer vignettes. Okay, y'all, we're at the end of the video, so it's time for me to tell y'all goodbye. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my content. And until then, I'll see y'all again in my next video. Bye, y'all.